My name is George Woodrow. This talk is about the process of making a new control widget in the Wolfram language. While the specific case described here is for a circular slider, the procedure involved should be general enough to apply to custom controls that you may want to make. I needed a circular slider when I rewrote my old Star Trek basic game from the 1970s in Wolfram language. This was the topic of a talk I gave at the WTC in 2013. The documentation for locator panel gives an example of how to make a simple control, which is shown to the left here. What I wanted, though, was a widget that had the same options and functionality as a built-in slider control. I used the documentation for slider as a guide and made a list of specifications for my new control that matched its specs as closely as possible. The main difference in my design is that the circular slider always starts at zero and goes to a user-specified maximum value. I also looked at angular gauge, which can be configured into a control that covers an entire circle. The problem with this control is that it cannot wrap around to go from the maximum value to the minimum when the control is moved continuously clockwise, for example. Many of these options were specified at the start of the project. Many of them were added during development. One of the many advantages of Wolfram language is that the development cycle is so short that interactive development and design is relatively easy. The first step is to make a basic function. The approach I used in Mathematica Trek works. You can see the code on your own. The second example is a more elegant implementation using the same technique. However, the code is not isolated, and when I needed two widgets, I had to cut and paste the code. Here's a brief summary of all the experimentation I had to do to make a basic function. One of the critical steps is to use the hold first attribute to pass the dynamic value by reference. I also had to use the second argument to dynamic so that I could use an angle measurement in radians internally and yet show and return a scaled value. There's the code. Once I got a working function, I defined its options using options to set up a list similar to what I had made in the planning stage. This example code shows what I had to do for each option. I had to protect the options so that the user could not inadvertently change them. I had to create usage statements so that Wolfram language would know that the symbols were in use and not color them blue. It also permits the user to get information about the options. Once the options have been defined, they need to be incorporated into the function. This generic code shows how. Note the use of ops colon options parameter. This permits us to have no options specified or as many options as the user wants. The options are then extracted from the list. 
Now that we have the basic functionality for Circular Slider, we want to polish the code by adding error handling and optional parameters. We'll go over the code for this uh, when we look at the final code. Dealing with errors is as much an aesthetic issue as a coding problem. Wolfram Language deals with a lot of errors by simply returning the user input unexecuted, but it also executes some of the code with big orange boxes or markers to show that there is an error. For this simple function, I elected to use a safe default value and return an error message. That way the user can still see something and still know that there was a problem. Slider permits the, use, the user to use a function with no parameters, and we want to emulate this. However, if one of the parameters is missing and there are options, the first option is misinterpreted as a parameter. To prevent this, we use accept. This excludes rules from being uh, used as a parameter. The code is now complicated. In addition to the main function, circular slider, there are helper functions, options, and error messages. We want to wrap everything up into a package so that the only thing Wolfram Language sees is a single singular slider function and the appropriate usage and error handling statements. Since our code was already polished, putting it into a package was straightforward. The process of building a package is described very well in the documentation. I have uploaded a package with a commented code in it for you to examine and use. This package provides minimal documentation, which should be sufficient for most purposes. Uh, I can't make this any larger, uh, but you get the idea. However, if the new control is to be on par with the built-in functions, it needs proper documentation. In the past, the only way to provide full documentation was to use Wolfram Workbench. Starting with version 12.2, however, new tools have been exposed to put code into packlets which will eventually provide full documentation. Packlet tools are experimental in version 12.3.1, and the documentation tools are incomplete. However, these tools are under active development for version 13 and following. Watch this space. The functionality I present here is quite usable, but until I have used it in various projects, I will not consider it to be final. For one thing, I will use it in Mathematical Trek, the next generation. Perhaps in the future, there will be a Packlet repository similar to the function repository where this tool can be distributed and with version control so that upgrades can be made easily. In addition, the recently completed Wolfram Study Group, creating custom user interfaces, has a lot of useful information and I may modify the code based on what I have learned. The study group is over, but the archived materials are available. I recommend that anyone interested take a look at the notebooks. I would like to thank the entire Wolfram support group and especially the people named here for help with this project. The final code is annotated with interesting things to look at. As I alluded to earlier, there are a lot of experimentation and false steps involved in this project, and the comments mark the traces of the many mistakes I made and corrected. Let's look at the code.
Since it is based on locator panel, the function's internal variable is a point. However, when we want to return a value or display it on screen, we need a value between zero and max. These functions do the job. Note that the point to value function calls four other functions depending on the value of start position. It would be possible to put all this logic into one function, but I find that it is much easier to design and maintain bulletproof code if cases are handled separately. Dealing with value to point, the inverse function, is easier since once we convert the value to radians, we can just add the angular offset. Note that we deal with the possible errors here, including a default in the switch statement, just in case there is an Ill illegal value for start. Since pos is a variable passed by reference from the outside, we need to be sure that it is, in fact, a number, and similarly for the pass values for dx. It is always good practice to separate the display part of a function from the computational part. In this case, the function converts the passed value to a point and draws the widget accordingly. The treatment of background here is instructive. Since it is passed by value, we cannot change the value internally, hence the local variable myBackground. And here's where we need to change it if we have an opacity of zero. The code to deal with the color of the number is semi-experimental. We wanted to make sure that it shows up against the background color, so we use color distance. For the function setup, we define and protect the options and provide uses statements for them. Then we set up error messages. Finally, we take the critical step of setting the attributes of the function to hold first, which has the effect of passing the position by reference. The function itself spends most of its time unpacking and validating its options. Checking the input. And then we do error checking on the input. And we deal with special cases for background and size. Only the last few lines here deal with the function itself. Basically, locator pane, pane dynamic, exclusion so that it won't return an error if you pick the exact center of a circle. And I save definitions to true. In the light of the UI study group, I may use a different method of its initialization. I should point out that coding style is, in many ways, still quite idiosyncratic. My style reflects almost 50 years of coding starting with mainframes with a fraction of the power of my Apple Watch, 
and in a variety of languages. There are other ways to accomplish the same result in Wolfram language, but the main outlines presented here may prove useful for your own explorations. Thank you. If there are any questions, uh, you can type them into the Zoom chat or the other chat. I'm looking at uh, both of them now. And uh, if we need to, we can share my screen and look at the, uh, the code, but I think that's pretty much straightforward. Okay. Um, as far as I can tell, you just need to go to the um, Wolfram U page and it will have a link to the study group and the archive material is there. Uh, when, I, when I made this uh, uh, video, the uh, study group was actually still active, so I didn't, didn't double check that. Let me see here. Right, under, under the Wolfram U tab in the main Wolfram site, if you scroll down to the bottom, there's daily study groups. And the, uh, at the bottom of that page are the archive study groups. And I see that the archive's not there yet. So uh, I was told that it would, would show up eventually. Okay, I'm using a trackpad. Uh, I have two laptops and no, no mouse. And um, so I don't know about the mouse itself. Using the trackpad, there's absolutely no uh, issues at all. I just uh, put my, uh, move the cursor inside of the thing and, and move it around. Um, the cursor does not have to be on the track, of course. I could have re restricted that, but that was getting a little too fancy. And I made sure that if the point is in the exact center, uh, it's excluded so that I don't get a division by zero error when I uh, take the arc tangent. But um, I haven't tested this with a mouse. And in fact, I don't have a mouse to test anymore. But I will see if I can find one to check that out. Yes, the trackpad on my notebook. I'm, I'm using um, uh, using a MacBook Air, and uh, yeah, that's a that's a trackpad. Uh, when I retired, I stopped using uh, desktops uh, simply to have more real estate on my uh, desk. I, I, yeah, it's, it, that would be nice. I, I experimented at one time using my uh, game controller, uh, which about 10 years ago was a hot thing because uh, uh, the um, version of Mathematica had hooked things up to make it easy to, to fiddle things around with. Um, I don't know, it would be, it would be different. Uh, my, my first idea when I was rewriting um, the Star Trek game, which I learned on, uh, I started using on a, um, a teletype, was to actually emulate the teletype. So uh, obviously there was only just the input line and um, I would record the, uh, the sound of a teletype clunking around. Uh, so you get the full experience on, on a laptop. But um, to me, uh, using, using a knob is not, in, not in, in keeping with that, that use case. I don't know, you know, some people like knobs. Yeah, I, I thought about the, the um, putting the thing into the um, function repository. Um, but I couldn't see how to, to turn it into a single entry point. Um, as I understood the function repository, um, it was looking for like a single self-contained, uh, you know, G of X, blah, 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 and, and no, nothing extra like uh, error messages or usage or, um, 
even the set attributes didn't appear to be, there didn't appear to be any way of doing that. But uh, if you think it can be done, then uh, we'll revisit that because that would, that would be great. Um, obviously I'm going to revise this so that uh, it can take use of the um, access uh, widget because it would be nice to have, uh, have uh, if for some applications to have uh, uh, tick marks around the edge. And uh, I didn't see any easy way of doing that. So I left that out. And, and, and what, what I realized when somebody asked Stephen yesterday about making a, um, a nonlinear slider, uh, once you have the technique for doing something like what I did, then, then doing another uh, more exotic than what's in the in the toolkit already uh, um, UI widget is fairly straightforward because it's basically the same procedure. You just uh, need to have a different underlying uh, uh, graphics input. Okay, what I was looking at was angular gauge. And uh, I can make the UI work perfectly. The problem that I had with, and this was some time ago, is that uh, you can have it wrap around continuously from zero to 100, say. But once you get to 100, you can't continue to go around in the same direction and get back to zero. So I was looking at angular gauge and I don't see continuous gauge in the um, documentation center. So, and, and you know, if I could have made that work, the, the, the built-in angular gauge, if it allowed wraparound, uh, my job would be done because it has a much uh, prettier set of uh, display options than what I got. Okay, uh, I, yes, the, the answer is, uh, according to John Fultz, uh, it, this should work. So yes, my first idea was to put this in the function repository, but uh, I didn't think that the function would fit the more narrow requirements of the function re repository as opposed to the uh, packet repository. But uh, if we can make it work, sure, of course. What would be really nice is if uh, somebody at Wolfram could say, yeah, this is really nice. There's a little cleanup that needs to be done, but we put it in as a, as a, uh, a built-in uh, function. Okay, um, so no more questions. I think I'm able to end this thing here. Uh, I wanna thank everyone for attending and I hope this is useful for somebody. Thanks.